Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the 2002 Annual Conference of the Science Business Network. Uh, I'm Marilyn Fieschi, I'm the CEO of Science Business, and it is my pleasure to welcome all of you this morning, and especially the members of our, uh, of our network. I'm here in the studio in Brussels. What you see behind me is the actual grey sky we have in Brussels. We don't need to fake it. This is unfortunately a very regular thing for us here. And uh, despite the frustration of not having all of you in a conference hall, we prepared for you a very ambitious program. What this conference is about is to provide the first public assessment of the Horizon Europe program. Yesterday, we spoke about scientific advice in policy making. We spoke about trust in science. We spoke also about the badly wanted association of the UK and Switzerland to the, to the program. Today, we have an entire uh, set of discussions uh, ahead of us. We're going to talk about the future of fundamental science. We're going to discuss whether Europe has the right innovation building blocks in place. We're going to talk also about the necessary bridges between medicine regulation and innovation. In the afternoon, we'll talk about climate tech, about the transatlantic research collaboration. And finally, in the wrap-up session, we will welcome Jean-Éric Paquet, the Director General of Research and Innovation at the European Commission, to talk, well, to discuss the feedback science business has been collecting over the past few weeks about the programme and with Jean-Éric Paquet and other um, and other speakers, we will set directions of travel for the remainder of 2022. The science business journalists are striving to cover news emerging from every session. We have a live blog available on the science business website. You can also access it through the exhibition space on the platform. And there, feel free to sign up to the science business newsletter and to never miss an update uh, moving forward. So before we kick off the debate, I really warmly want to thank uh, the sponsors and partners that support this conference, namely the Tresca project, uh, the organizations involved in the Stick to Science initiative, which was successfully launched yesterday, the partners involved in the Science Business Technology Strategy Board and in the new Future Proofing Medicine initiative. During the day, please engage with us. You can do that in several ways. You can ask questions to the speakers for the Q&A function. Just use Twitter. There is a dedicated hashtag. It's Horizon Assessment, and you'll be able to see it on the screen. Or just by connecting with other participants in the meeting hub. In the, uh, we, we are, the, the first session of, the, of this morning is going to be uh, about the promises and the objectives of the French presidency of the EU. And we are extremely lucky to, to have with us this morning Frédéric Vidal, the French Minister of Higher Education, Research and Innovation. We managed to have 30 minutes of our time and we're delighted to welcome her. Madame la Ministre, bonjour, et merci beaucoup d'avoir accepté notre invitation. I'm going to switch to English. <laughs> this is the language of the conference. Uh, again, thank you very much for being with us uh, this morning. It's, it's a real pleasure. Uh, France is holding the presidency of the EU uh, for the first half of this year. Tell us, just in a few words, what do you want the French presidency to be remembered for? What would you like to, uh, to, to, just the, to be the legacy of the French presidency in the field of research and innovation? Well, uh, first of all, let me really thank you for your invitation to this uh, important conference. Uh, it was really a great pleasure and uh, I'm speaking, uh, of course, on behalf of the French presidency on the topics of uh, research and innovation. Our presidency motto is recovery, strength and a sense of belonging. And our priorities in the area of uh, higher education, research and innovation are a, ref a reflection of, of this. 
we are fully committed to work on the implementation of the European Research Area Policy Agenda for the period 2022-2024. And the 20 actions which are annexed to the Council conclusions we adopted on November 26th is a major step forward to deploy the new European Research Area and to achieve an effective knowledge market. And we will work in the next month to, to advance this uh, political agenda. Our main goals are first empowering European universities to complete to compete uh, internationally, particularly by delivering uh, European degrees, jointly recruiting the best researchers and students worldwide, establishing joint structure uh, such as laboratories uh, at the best international level. And it will, of course, help to strengthen the sense of European belonging for students. Clearing the way of uh, implement, the way to implement the European missions that will tap into the potential of science to improve our citizens' life. As you say, Horizon Europe is underway, but still there are aspects to discuss in order to ensure the right impact of a framework program. And missions are an excellent example. They aim to improve the daily life of citizens in terms of uh, adapting to climate change, fighting against cancer, protecting uh, oceans, improving soil health, and uh, achieving climate neutral cities. So missions are new approach at European level and expectations are high. So we plan to work with member states and the commission in order to specify their governance at the European national and local levels, in order to ensure synergies with other funding programs and to engage citizens in, in the process. And during the French presidency, we, we will present council conclusions on these aspects. Uh, and we, we will organize a high level conference in Paris on March uh, 21. Another hot topic that we plan to address uh, is innovation. The French presidency will support the construction of an effective European innovation area. And to address uh, these objectives, the EU has created a major tool, the European Innovation Council. However, it will only bear fruit if it is linked to national and European mechanisms that allow the most uh, innovative companies to scale up. So uh, we will also organize in May uh, on the campus of uh, the University Paris-Saclay, the week of innovative regions in, in Europe. And of course, we will continue to support efforts to take more into consideration open science practices. And the idea is also to, to work about the question of values and, and uh, um, the, the principles uh, that are driving research and, and innovation at the, within the European Union. Can we come back to some of the, but so thank you for that. So you have a vast uh, program in front of you and not much time. So uh, we'll come back on the timing uh, right after. But so as, um, as you mentioned, there are a number uh, of themes and priorities that, uh, that you're putting forward. And in fact, yes, uh, Horizon Europe is underway. And the result is that uh, there is no man significant major legislative file on your desk when it comes to, uh, to European um, research and innovation policy. But you started with European universities, and this, this is very important because uh, France has always been a leading force behind European universities. And the, the Commission strategy document that was recently released does provide a few more details uh, on how it plans to cement uh, the university alliances and support them in, issue, in issuing European degrees, right? Um, however, setting up these European degrees is going to take time. So my question for you is how far do you think the presidency can go uh, in, uh, in that, on, on that front? 
So you're right, the Commission, uh, through the adoption on January 18 of its Open Strategy for Universities, has reaffirmed the importance of higher education and research institutions are key players in the knowledge square of education, research, innovation, and services to, to society. So on our side, we think that it is crucial to reinforce the research and innovation dimensions of the European Universities Initiative. And uh, we will work on facilitating transnational cooperation uh, in order to develop, for example, European degrees, to recruit researchers, teachers in common, or to create, to create joint research structures. Um, in fact, uh, we are not now discussing council conclusions to strengthen transnational cooperation between universities. And I believe that uh, we can go very far if we prepare well and explain carefully what the next steps will be. And I confirm that this conclusion, I hope, will be presented to the council in April for adoption. Regarding the degrees, and the first question is, what can we already achieve with today's instruments and tools? Imagine if we could identify the few criteria at European level that could trigger the award of an European label for joint degrees. So degrees will, would, of course, remain national, but the open added value of the joint programs will be highlighted. Um, the, the question is also how can we support together these alliances, in particular for their structuration across borders. And I believe here, as well as we, we can ex exploit existing funding schemes um, at European, national or regional levels and make them more easily available. And we can also adapt them to the needs of the European universities' alliances. So I propose that we work on pilot approaches from 2024 on a programmatic and integrated funding gathering relevant European funds and possible national support. I am convinced that the achievements of European universities will highly contribute to strengthening the competitiveness of the Union and will also be a source of inspiration for the entire European higher education sector. And, um, with uh, other Euro European ministers uh, who were in Paris on January uh, 25, we discussed this point, the future of uh, universities in Europe, the need to better articulate national and European policies, and uh, discussions were very clear. All ministers asked for future constructive steps to consolidate alliances such as European universities. Thank you. Can we switch to another topic uh, that also seems very high on your, uh, on your agenda? That's the research assessment reform. Uh, you mentioned the 20 priorities of the European Research Area Policy Agenda. Research assessment is one of them. And I know there was some announcement uh, in Paris at the Open Science Conference uh, over the weekend. Uh, However, in um, some organizations, and especially in Germany, are uh, just warning that rushing into a reform is risky. And it's maybe something that would need uh, to take a bit, more, a bit more time. So what's your objective on the front of research assessment? What are you hoping, how far do you think you, you can go in the, in the coming weeks? Well, first of all, I'm really convinced that uh, sharing knowledge through collaborative networks can really enhance scientific production and dissemination. Just an example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, it was very important to share um, the um, negative results uh, regarding clinical trials. So for me, it is really the main point. And uh, we will present in the coming weeks uh, council conclusions that will aim to accelerate the implementation and the impact of open science policies and practices. And uh, that will be, I hope, adopted at the Competitiveness Council in next June. But to do that, we, we need to think about transforming research assessment systems because it is also a key component uh, if, if we want to, to support uh, open science. And in this context, of course, we welcome the Commission initiative of launching a dialogue at the European level 
with stakeholders on how to facilitate and speed up changes. Uh, but of course, we have to discuss, and this will lead to concrete actions, I hope so, to, to reform research assessment systems. Uh, you mentioned the Open Science European Conference uh, last week with the support of the French presidency. Um, more than 1,800 participants uh, were present, and that, show, uh, the, that shows the, the support of the research community for a more quality-oriented uh, evaluation. And uh, I, I think that if we, we want to work to reform uh, the evaluation process, we need to refocus on quality and concrete impact rather than uh, on the quantity. Why, why do you, can you just explain us in a few words, why do you link research assessment with the open science agenda? Is it a fair way of proceeding considering the, the unequal access to open science? In fact, if, if you want to use uh, open science, of course, you, you can't use only in bibliometry uh, in order to, to do research assessments. So, to have a real open science policy, you need to rethink about research assessment. All right. Okay. Thank you. Let's move to another topic that I know is dear to your heart, career. Uh, career prospect for researchers. Reality is across Europe that many researchers are still facing very pre precarious uh, conditions, working conditions, or very limited career pathways. And I know France has taken steps with President Macron and yourself uh, to, to reform uh, the, the career prospect, the career um, um, framework for, for researchers. Do you think France can have a real, the French presidency can be a milestone in terms of improving conditions, working conditions for, for careers and making Europe more attractive as well for, for researchers from all over the world? Well, on, on last year, on, on May 28, uh, 2021, under the Portuguese presidency, the Council approved conclusions aiming at offering researchers attractive careers and working conditions and making brain circulation a, a reality. So this new European framework identifies a number of solutions to make scientific careers more attractive. And in line with these conclusions, we will implement the necessary conditions to achieve the objectives of a new era policy agenda in this field. And I'm thinking in particular of the establishment of new era talent platform, a new online one-stop shop, uh, to the revision of the European Charter for Researchers and the Code of Conduct for the Recruitment of Researchers, the launch of the era for You uh, initiative to promote the movement of talent between sectors and, and across uh, EU. Uh, but on that topic, I think also that the COVID-19 pandemic has been a difficult time for researchers. So laboratories have sometimes been closed during several months. Research has been delayed. And it is a stressful situation for researchers. So we are also very much aware of how hard this time has been for them and their work, and especially for young researchers, so starting from a an in-depth state of play. We are convinced of the need to have an initiative launched at the European level in order to assess the impact of the pandemic on the careers of young researchers and to identify potential, potential solutions. Um, so this initiative could be organized around data collection, impact assessment, share of good practices, which could be showcased during uh, European conference. In, in France, we decide to, to add uh, several months of funding for PhD, for postdoc, and, and we also uh, uh, using the, the new law for, uh, for research uh, to increase the remuneration of researchers, uh, to increase the funding capacity of our national research agency, and to, to have also a 30% increase in the research budget uh, during the, the, the next uh, 10 years. So, 
uh, for me, uh, we have to work about the attractiveness of uh, the careers, but we also have uh, to take care of young researchers after this uh, pandemic period. Is that, uh, is the, do you think that your fellow uh, member states are going in the right direction? Do you find there is an agreement around the necessary moves uh, in, that, uh, in that area? Well, I, I think that, uh, as I said, we, we discussed that during the Portuguese presidency, and I think that we all agree that uh, we need to pay more attention uh, to the scientific careers if we want to have the best researchers in the EU. And if we want to deliver technology sovereignty, isn't it? So it's, it's the next uh, topic that I wanted to cover this morning. This is one of the, of the, of the clear priority for, for, the, uh, for President Macron. Uh, in fact, when he announced the, the priorities for the French presidency, he came back to the, to the notion of technology sovereignty. The EU speaks about strategic autonomy, and before him, uh, the Slovenians, the Portuguese, and even the Germans uh, were, um, um, wanted to, to achieve this technology sovereignty. For President Macron, there are two specific um, uh, sectors that are very important. That's defense and semiconductors, but that's just among others. Uh, the question when it, feel, when it comes to research and, in, and innovation is how does, what's, what's the consequence of this technology strategy objective on research collaboration, starting with, with our closest neighbors? Uh, I'm talking about UK and Switzerland here. So before you come, we come to the, to the impact of technology sovereignty, is there any prospect, you think, of seeing the UK and Switzerland associated to Horizon program, to, to, to Horizon Europe uh, during the French presidency? So there are two questions in, yeah. in your question, in fact. The, the, the first one is dealing with um, technological sovereignty. And the second one is dealing with uh, cooperation in, in research. So, regarding the, the first part of your question, um, strengthening our strategic autonomy or technological sovereignty has become, has become a very important issue um, since the health crisis. And this crisis uh, has been a, a powerful indicator of the fragility of global value chain and we have already become aware of our dependencies, which are sometimes to increase on certain territories or players. So, in this phase of uh, economic recovery, France, as a French presidency of the European Union Council, is committed to fully strengthening the European model of industrial production, reducing the EU's strategic dependencies, and this is, for example, uh, evidenced by the informal internal market and industry competitiveness councils held in Lens uh, last week and shared by my colleague, uh, uh, Minister Bruno Le Maire. Um, on, on the other side of uh, your question, there is the cooperation and the scientific uh, cooperation. And, and of course, uh, the question is, is really, uh, I mean, different. Um, we know that research and innovation uh, are international and we need to have uh, international uh, collaboration. But we need to have this international collaboration um, within the frame of European Union's principles and values for international uh, cooperation. More specifically, to the Association of the United Kingdom to Northern Europe, this is a strategic issue that we must address in the context of the overall relationship between the Union and the United Kingdom. The association of a third country requires mutual trust between the parties, and of course we expect uh, the UK to demonstrate its willingness to cooperate on other ongoing discussions. Furthermore, the UK's decision to leave the European Union has a huge impact on the scientific collaboration in, and on higher education. And of course, we regret that students and researchers are the first victims of this decision. 
And uh, it is also regrettable that the UK has decided not to participate in the Erasmus Plus program, has increased tuition fees for European students, and, and so on. So, for Switzerland, it is also, of course, a very important scientific partner of the European Union, in a key player in the fields of science, research, innovation. But we believe here yeah, as well that the Union must continue to consider EU-Swiss relations in a global and not segmented manner. And in this respect, the question of Switzerland's association to the Horizon Europe program should not be dissociated from the global dimension of the EU-Switzerland relationship. I would like to remind you that with the current regulation, even for Swiss scientists, academics and institutions cannot lead research projects and do not have access to European funding, they are still eligible to participate in Horizon Europe collaborative projects without being an, an associated country. Thank you for clarifying this and thank you for taking the question. What about the rest of the world? We have only a couple of minutes left and there is, you know, there's one more question I want to ask you, but I know you have an important conference planned in Marseille about international collaboration. Do you want to tell us what it's going to be about? Yes, of course. So in Marseille, uh, on March 8th and 9th, we will uh, discuss um, uh, with uh, the Commission um, on the basis of a declaration that will lay out uh, the European Union's principles and values for international cooperation. And we will also want to reinforce the question of uh, reciprocity. And of course, uh, we will do that also with our international partners, and they will also be able to contribute to this dialogue as their representatives will also be invited to the second day of the conference, because we think that it is very important to discuss that, um, of course, with the Commission, but uh, with all our international partners and we'll be outside. We'll be following that, uh, that conference as well. In fact, the science business journalists are following very closely uh, the French presidency. The presidential elections are fast approaching. Uh, are they going to disrupt the, the presidency? What is to be expected? And may I ask a personal question? Who do you bet on as next president for France? <laughs> So oh, I think it's not the, the place to answer to, to personal questions, but uh, I can say that we really have prepared this presidency to make sure that uh, it will be a success, and that we are fully committed to our responsibilities, and we will, of course, continue working to ensure that uh, we deliver on our objectives. And I, I'm pretty convinced that regarding uh, science, regarding research, higher education, innovation, um, and, and regarding the work that uh, we prepare with uh, our colleagues of the TRIO, um, this uh, presidency uh, will be a success and will open a lot of opportunities to enhance uh, our European Union research area. Minister Vidal, thank you very much. Uh, thank, thank you for you. spending uh, time with us this morning and for sharing your thoughts about uh, what you think the French presidency can achieve and what are the most urgent challenges you think uh, we need to address at the European level. I believe your presence is required elsewhere, especially in a council, yes. in a minister council meeting. So we will let you, we will let you go, but thank you thank again. You. Goodbye. Goodbye.